Right then, attack and defense all in one whack here. And I'm going to try and rattle through it, although I have a tendency to ramble. So um, apologies there. I just don't like not giving enough detail. I probably give too much detail, as I already have, about describing not talking enough, uh, not talking too much. So we're doing it slightly different this time. This is in order of release rather than alphabetical order, which we did last time. Um, so we're going to start with Sledge and we'll work our way through all the attackers and defenders. Just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 um, in a row. And there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 rows. What's that? 73 operators we've got now, um, which is pretty cool. So, right, 73. Let's go. Sledge sits for me in... Uh, by the way, before I start, I know I said I didn't want to waffle. I think what we're hoping to find here is we have like a few in S, more in A, the most in B... Less in C and not many in D. So it makes like a bit of a triangle shape horizontally across the page. I think that's what we're probably going to expect. Sledge, for me, sits in probably C tier now, if I'm honest with you. Um, Book is better at making vertical because he can do it both ways. Ram also exists, although Ram, obviously, you only get three uh, three rolls of the dice to make vertical. Um, the L85 is an incredibly solid gun. But now with frags being a little bit weaker, although they're still decent, I think Sledge, unfortunately, sits in C. Maybe it's time for Sledge SMG 11 coming back, maybe. Is that what we need? Thatcher. I think Thatcher probably sits up here. Um, I think one of the things, if you want to be a good Thatcher player, is you need to remember that Thatcher isn't just about getting walls open. If you're making a push onto site and there's Maestro cams and Malusi Banshees um, and other electronic gadgets, Fenrir traps, etc., etc., that are stopping you from getting into sight. Echo cams now, because well, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, I think Thatcher does more than just opening walls, which I think some people fall into. And he's got the L85 or the AR33, which are great gun options as well. Smoke will always be an incredibly good operator. I nearly said will always be S tier then. I think with his shield, he goes up to S tier. At the moment, he probably just sits in A. Mute is always and will always be, depending on the changes, obviously, will S be S tier for me. Counters almost everything. Offers, especially at higher ranks where drones are so important. Um, but even at lower ranks, he's, he just you know counters air jabs, counters claymores. You don't get um, Deimos tracked. You don't get Dog be called. He, he's just got so many good things about him. A great weapon set as well. Probably my favorite defender. Ash. Oh, it's somewhere between S and A again for me. The R4C is controllable again. Um, it's now got an ACOG again. I think she just sits in A, I think. I think A's fair. Um, yeah, just sit, actually a very underrated vertical op. Got three breaching charges and two ash breaching charges. So a potential to make five holes in the floor. Um, good op. Thermite, me boy. Thermite should sit in the tier above S, but realistically Thermite probably sits in B. He's, the, he's probably the most balanced operator, right? He's just got... You know what his kit does. He's got smokes and flashes. A properly underrated gun, by the way. Um, my favourite operator, Mutant Thermite, and my boys. Castle. Now, in the right hands, Castle's a joke. Um, I've been trying to show that in some of the solo queue videos I've been doing recently, and I think Castle probably sits in A. Now, he is quite easily countered to an extent, but... He's only really easily countered by someone like Sledge, who has unlimited... Well, he doesn't have Sledge, actually has 25 swings of his hammer each round. Whereas, if you've got three breaching charges, that means that you've got at least one castle barricade up. If you've got a gone six, you can only get rid of one. If you're playing Zoth, you can only get rid of two, plus breaching charges. If you're playing Ash, you've got breaching charges in the Ash, grenade, uh, the Ash uh, breaching rounds. So, if you put... Oh, where's castle there? No, I think he goes there. The ACOG on the UMP with an extended barrel is is pretty decent. There's no recoil whatsoever. Granted, the fire rate's a little bit low. But with a bulletproof or with prox alarms, a, a castle barricade to cut off an area with a prox alarm works so well. One of my favorite ops to play on defense at the minute. Pulse. Probably sits in... Probably C for me. Only really viable on sites where you're going to be below. You couldn't really... Um, play him on like a, a, a I suppose you could play him on a on a higher um, site you would play below or if you were playing on the basement you would assume people come in above you so again solid gives a lot of information but there's a long time between swapping the scanner out and putting it bringing it back out does have the UMP but doesn't have the ACOG could maybe make an argument to put pulse in B but I think for now we'll put him in C twitch I think twitch probably sits in B for me as well obviously a tremendous mirror counter I think the F2 is a little bit poo at the minute, and if the F2 was a little bit better, then she'd probably be a bit higher up. The DMR is, is popular at the minute. 
Um, I think, again, another pretty well-balanced operator. Don't forget, she actually has four drones, obviously, because of the two normal drones as well. So that's quite a lot of information that once you don't, you know, Twitch drones can get rid of enemy utility, but then can also just be a drone and give you a flank cam or whatever. <sighs> Monty. Where does Monty sit now? I don't like Monty, and I don't like shields in Siege, personally, and I don't want to put Monty in S, and I'm not going to. I'm going to put Monty in A. I think Monty at the minute doesn't really have a counter um, other than traps. This whole sort of, oh, you can shoot his shield to slow him down. Yeah, you can, but then you've got no bullets in your gun. You've got to reload. Um, you can counter Monty's when they're too aggressive. But if you play against a Monty that knows what they're doing, knows when to push when they've got someone cornered and they can just melee them once, melee them again and kill them. Or if, you know, if you're know, if you playing against a Monty that's super passive um, and, and knows the balance between the two, He's a, a real, real force at the minute. If a Monty's too aggressive, they're easy to counter. And if a Monty's too passive, they don't really offer that much. But you play a good Monty at the minute, and it will ruin your defenses. Doc. So, I always used to put Doc here, because I didn't like Doc. However, I'm slowly coming round to the idea that Doc isn't that bad. Um, the heal can be good at times. I'm going to move him up one. I still don't think he's quite beat here. I think I'm going to put him in C tier. Still not a bad op, but I mean, the MP5 of the ACOG with the Bailiff is nice. Um, but again, I would think I would rather, if you were to ask me about most of the defenders, I would rather have most of the defenders in the stack than Doc because they would offer something utility wise. Uh, maybe Kavera, I would rather have Doc. Maybe Thunderbird, I would rather have Doc. But there's not many other defenders that I would not. I, if I just quickly go through some defenders here, I would rather have Jaeger counter the, get the nades. Rather have um, Frost, uh, obviously Frost. But I would, yeah, without going through every one. Kavera, no. Maybe Clash, no. Um, but Mo oh, Oryx, no. But most other operators, I would rather have. Um, I would rather have an, like a bit of utility there rather than just the option to heal. You know what? Like the other utility is going to give you something. You might not need a dock in a round. Um, Rook, I think. I think I'm going to put Rook in D. To be honest with you, I like well, Rook's a cool character. I like his. I like his gadget. It's a cool idea. But I, I just think, and I don't want to sound an elitist here. I, I play in Champilo. <laughs> Thanks very much. Um, and I just don't... I th again, I would rather have any bit of utility. When you get downed, and, and this is the same for every rank. This is not just champ. When you get downed, how often do you not get up realistically? It's almost every time. How many times have you revived yourself with a root plate? It's quite a lot. Yes, it gives you certain other health benefits where um, you've got slightly more health. But again, in Siege, I don't think health is my first concern, really. Glass. I don't think he's quite D. He probably goes in C. Just a little bit situational for me, Glaz. As soon as I see a, a frag grenade, uh, sorry, a smoke grenade, I don't peek it. And you could learn something from that way. Just if you see a smoke grenade, don't peek it. As soon as you, and he's, the other thing is as well on the other side, if you are playing Glaz, always use a silencer um, because Glaz's gun is so unique in the sound. As soon as I hear that sound, I know I don't peek the smoke. Um, fuse, I actually think is better than most people think he is. I'm tempted to put a fuse in A. You know what? I'm going to put a fuse in A. There's a there's a thing that you can do in Siege to learn the pattern of a fuse charge. And when you learn the pattern of a fuse charge, it'll mean you can actually fuse pretty accurately. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to open paint on the other monitor. I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to tell you how a fuse charge works. Here's the floor. Here's fuse. Here's the fuse charge, right? It goes through the floor. They always are going, sorry, they always go in this pattern, right? There's five pallets, and they always go right to left, like this. So one, two, three, four, five. That's as you look across at it, okay? So if you were to be looking down onto the, the floor, so here's the floor that we're going to put a fuse charge on. This is us looking down on a bird's eye view here. This is our fuse charge. The first pallet goes to the right, then middle then left, and then out wide. So it goes one, two, three, four, five. So in theory, if fuse pallets don't hit anything, sometimes they'll hit the floor and bounce off, but generally they'll go off in a pattern like this on the floor. One, two, three, four, five. And when you know that, and you know that there's an area below that you want to clear, if you're, you just need to make sure that you're facing a certain direction when you put that fuse charge down. So if your fuse, we're looking down again, here's fuse. You need to put the fuse charge down when you're facing that direction, and then it'll go off in that order again. If you put the fuse charge down when you're facing that direction, they'll go to the right, so it'll go that way first. 
So the direction that you put the fuse charge down matters. And fuse is actually, once you learn that, you can you can get pretty accurate with fusing areas. A lot of people think you put the cluster charge down, it just goes everywhere. Fuses, you can be accurate with fuse. Capcan, I know console players want him here, and I think he is solid, but I think he's also quite easily countered. The introduction of Brava is, makes it a bit easier. Um, but as soon as you see a Capcan, you've got to check doorways. I don't. I die to Capcans all the time, but that makes me bad. It doesn't make Capcan good. Tachanka, I think we're going to have to put him down in D, unfortunately. I actually don't mind Tachanka. I just think his gadget and it works okay. He's just a little bit too long of getting the Shimika launcher out and putting it back away. I know he's been talked about that if you could somehow get him like a, an underslung Shimika launcher, like a Buck's underslung shotgun, that would make him good. Um, but he's, in theory, it's a good idea, and it, and it could work, especially now he has a shield and a bearing nine. And yeah, I rate his LMG as well, you know. I rate his LMG. Blitz, um, not quite as good as Monty at the minute. I'm going to put him slightly further down. Still very good because of the new shield mechanics. However, I find Blitz is... Uh, if Blitz gets up within five meters of you, you, you might be done, though. But there's a, a certain... Um, if you can see a Blitz coming, Blitzies tend to just run at you. And they go, oh, I'm Blitz, I'm just going to blind you and run. And you can just shoot the feet as they run towards you. If you stay calm enough and cool enough, just go prone or crouch and shoot the feet as they run towards you. And you'll kill the Blitz. Um, so not as strong as Monty because it's very difficult to play Blitz passively, but but stronger than he was before the shield op. I've got hay fever, by the way, and I'm really trying not to just scratch my nose. You've probably seen me for the past few minutes just trying to get rid of it being quite subtle. I can't be subtle anymore. Whew. All right, sorry about that. IQ. I like IQ at the minute, but again, probably another pretty well balanced op. One of the things she teams up really well with is Deimos, by the way, so if there's an... If you ping a gadget with IQ scanner and the operator isn't um, ID'd at the top, you know, Deimos needs to have the, the operators identified in the match banner at the top. So if you haven't identified Jaeger and you want to scan Jaeger, you can just take an IQ to the roof, walk around the map till you find an ADS, ping the ADS, that'll make Jaeger ID'd at the top and Deimos can then track him. So it works well with that. 552 Commando, um, frag grenades, three speed, just, yeah, solid up. I like, I don't know, I sound like Borat then. I like... Then we've got Jaeger, who oh, I think sits down in C at the minute, unfortunately. Um, needs a bit of something, I think, Jaeger. Maybe, I don't think he needs an ACOG. I think maybe the ADS is now just a little bit um, a little bit weaker than it was now that there's different operators have been brought in. Um, well, my having an ACOG has made Jaeger a little bit more useless. I think maybe giving Jaeger, like, impacts or something like that might, might make him a bit better. My nose is going mad. Um... I just feel like Jaeger hasn't really got a spot at the minute. Bandit, great operator. Said this in a video I did recently, a solo queue video. Just, he really does give the attackers a problem. I know it's an easy problem to overcome, but he does give them a problem, and he's worth bringing nearly every time there's a wall that needs to be opened. Because even if they open the wall and they bring a Thatcher or they bring a Maverick or they bring pocket EMPs and they get it open, one, you can try and trick it, and two, you've still got an MP7 and a C4 and a three-speed operator who's absolutely class anyway. Buck. Buck would have gone here until last week, but losing his gone six, he drops down just a smidge. Used to be a one-man army, still is pretty much a one-man army just without a gone six. Deployable shields are problems for you now. Frost. Um, I'm going to put Frost pretty much in B. You don't realise, or maybe you do, I hate it when people say, you don't realise, because like, maybe you do realise, but um, being um, nerfed by the Frost movement thing is a real problem. Like It, it really slows you down. Um and even now in Year 9 Season 2, we're still running into uh, into Frost mats, me, me especially. Right, Blackbeard's down here. Just hasn't really got a place at the minute. I would rather take pretty much every other attacker. Um, obviously, the re the the rework is rumoured. We'll see where, where that takes him. Um, or even if it is Blackbeard, although it's sort of almost confirmed, isn't it, SI? Um, hopefully, he comes back stronger. Somebody said to me once that the OSA uh, utility should have just been a Blackbeard rework and I thought yeah that would make sense actually but I think Osa has a place, I like Osa as a character Valkyrie, boom, S tier will always be S tier man even the fact you can't, imagine how mad it used to be that you could throw Valk cameras outside on maps like Contra that used to be so repel and still are still repel heavy, imagine how mad that was um, but yeah, quality, MPX is class, Deagle's class for lines of sight C4, 3 cameras, great op S tier easy Capital. I rate Capital. I'm actually going to put Capital there as well. 
does everything himself, can clear areas with fire, can block lines of sight with smoke, can hard breach things, has got the gun six, has got a great gun in the para, great op, and he's a three speed, great op. Kavera. Sorry, I think Kavera's poo. I just, especially, I think Kavera's, maybe, maybe I'm being a bit harsh on Kavera, and I'm saying Kavera players are poo generally, because they tend to just run to the basements, hide, and then try and flank with 30 seconds left. And the worst Cavera player is when your team ends up in like a 3v5. So what that actually means is you're in a 2v5 and Cavera's in the basement, like crouch walking up red stairs on clubhouse when nowhere near the side or something. Um, so yeah, I just I just don't rate Cavera. I just think if you've got a Cavera on the other team and you can see you've identified Cavera in the prep phase, I think it's dead easy to counter when there's at least two of you playing together. Habana's solid. I think Habana probably sits in the middle as well. Um, fuse time on the X Kairos, like the the detonation time, makes her a little bit weaker than Ace, I think. Um, but still a great operator, and I think it fits well in B. Echo, I'm actually going to put Echo here. Now he's got an ACOG impact and a shield. Guns good. Two cameras that you can move around, and don't forget you can play Echo if you're playing in a stack and you've got someone who can shoot. Um, I'm the one who uses the cameras. I'm not the shooter. But if you've got Echo in a stack, you can use his drones like attacker drones. You can drone your defenders around the map to find the attackers being aggressive. It's what it's how Rogue won the Bullin Major when um, Deepak or Deepak sorry was um, just droning spoiter around the map as Echo when they were playing defense. Jackal solid. Um, I think Jackal probably fits in B, maybe A. PDW is a super underrated gun, by the way. Shotgun secondary smokes. Really good at roam clearing, makes people run away. Yeah, I'm gonna leave Jackal in A, I think, actually. Mirror goes in B. It's a strong operator, but when you can actually be bothered to deal with it, isn't as bad as you think it is. You see an ash on the board most um most games these days anyway, which is a direct counter. But there's not many places you can put a mirror where you can't destroy you from below. Um bank there's a couple of places, but most of the time you can destroy the mirror from below or above um and just shift you through the floor. So if you can be bothered to deal with mirror, the thing is, this is the beauty of siege, right? What you want to do as defenders is give the attackers as many problems as possible. Put some bandit batteries on the wall. Play a mirror that they've got to clear. Put some Malusi banshees in place they don't want to have to clear. Don't just play Vigil, Kavera, um, Thunderbird, Doc, and Rook. You know, because that's no. There might be the odd bit of barbed wire they've got to overcome. Do you know what I mean? Cause problems for the attackers. Ying is really, really good. Um, where does Ying sit? S, uh, sorry, A or A or B? <coughs> I think you've got to put Ying in A. Great gun as well with a lot of capacity. My nose is sending me. Legion S tier for me at the minute. Um, the shotgun secondary has really made Legion into a formidable opponent. His gun is a laser. Um, so many goo mines around the map. I rate I rate Legion highly at the minute. Ella probably just comes into B now. Ella for me used to sit around sort of C or D. I think Ella now comes into B. Got a shield. The gun is good, but the recoil is a bit bouncy after about eight bullets. Having impact grenades has buffed her up from there. Oh, wait, sorry. From there to there. The One of the key things as a roamer is being able to open hatches or being able to open rotates to get out of the way of things. Ella now has that ability, so she's now a, higher up on the, on the tier list for me. Dockerby's S tier literally does everything. Um... Great DMR, great SMG-12. Boss G's a joke at the minute. Um, identifies where people are, stops people being on cameras. You can get the opponent's cameras. I mean, I don't know why I'm telling you about Docker, but you know about her. She's tremendous. Vigil is a bit poo for me at the minute. He's, the reason Vigil's not there is because of the Boss G. The Boss G's a bit of a joke. I hope that gets addressed soon. Being able to one-shot people from any range and down them is not ideal. I think Zof probably fits in about here. If Zof wasn't a one speed, it should be considered a bit higher, I think, um, by most people anyway. Gun's really good. It's, it wasn't controllable for a while, but it is controllable again now. Um, a lot of utility there if you take breaching charges. So you've got three breaching charges, two impact grenades that can make holes as well, will destroy things, two concussion grenades. I think Zof's got a decent little kit there. Lion. Now he's got frag grenades. I mean, he's a good op, isn't he? He's okay. Just do lion scans really cause you that much problem? You just stand still for three seconds and it's over. And did you know that when the lion scan is three quarters done, you can when it's on the last quarter, you can just move anyway. It doesn't register. <sighs> Does lion go and see? Nah, he's got to go and be. 
Finca also in B, although the only reason Finca makes it to B and not further down in C is because of the LMG. I know there's uh, Pox on Locks, tremendous YouTuber, check him out. He does what I do, but miles better than me. Um, he loves Finca, but for, he's just... I like Siege when operators bring utility and tools to the table, and Finca is just sort of like a, a one-man solo queue, sort of, I can heal myself. Yeah, I heal others as well, but got nades and LMG. Like, don't get me wrong, great fragger, but not my type of player. Maestro goes in B as well. Could potentially be A, if I think about it. No, I'm putting Maestro in A, actually. Three cameras, Bailey for site setup, LMG on defense, which is rare. Um, plus, yeah, plus Bob. Yeah, I think I think Maestro sits there. I think you've got to play Maestro differently than we used to play Maestro when his cameras weren't um, smashable, punchable, destroyable. Well, only the lens is destroyable. So I think you have to play him a little bit differently by putting cameras in different places. There's also a different... A lot of people play Maestro to deny the plant, um, whereas you can play Maestro, f put his cameras further away from the site in areas that you know attackers are going to have to drone out. So you can protect your roamers by destroying drones that are trying to find roamers. So you can, you, Maestro himself would still play in sight and still would still as a very much a hard anchor, but the cameras can be further away from sight. You are eventually going to lose the cameras, um, but you, your idea is to kill two or three drones or, th or three or four drones across three cameras, and I think you've had your money's worth. Alibi is pretty decent at the minute, but probably sits in um, probably sits in B. So, solid op, guns a laser, Bailey for size setup, yeah, solid. Maverick probably sits in A. No counter is there for Maverick, that's the issue. Maybe Two Brow it was a bit of a counter but isn't anymore because Two Brow's canister doesn't affect Maverick anymore. So I think Maverick will always probably be in B as long as sorry, in A as long as there's no counter. The M4 is an absolute laser as well. Clash actually sits in C for me, not D. Um I think the thing with Clash is people just walk towards their enemy for some reason. And I don't know why. You you play Clash, you just walk towards your enemy, zapping them. But the only weakness of Clash, is, or one of the weaknesses of Clash, one of the few weaknesses, is when you're close to your enemy and they can punch your shield and shoot your feet. Um, I think the same, by the way, if you ever punched Clash's shield, you'll see that a shield goes so far out and you can shoot a feet quite easily. That should happen to Monty as well. So the, the, the thing with Clash is to keep your distance and just be a pain. Um, the problem with Clash is when you go down to like a 3v5, like two of your, two of your teammates have died quite quickly. You're in a 3v5. You've got to get your gun out at that point. But again, that SMG that Clash and Kali have, by the way, isn't bad at all. Nomad solid. Air jabs make a lot of noise. They're easy to destroy, but you've got to be patient and you've got to be attentive to know that they're there. ARX is good. Um, AK is good. I nearly said G36 then. I was thinking of Iona. AK is good. Breaching charges, flashes. Good op. Sits and B. Great flank watch. Is never a bad addition to an attacking lineup. Cade. A or B for Cade. Cade. I think Cade sits in B. I think there's that. I think there's enough operators with the MPs these days that if you really want to and you're stacking, you could you could make the yeah, Cade wouldn't be that much of a problem for you. But if you can't be bothered to solve those problems, Cade is good. Gridlock recently got buffed, but I still think Gridlock probably also sits in B. Recently got buffed, so the tracks now do 15 damage per tick rather than 10 damage per tick. Um, I think what Gridlock needs is to be able to... One punch wouldn't destroy a Gridlock spike. I think two punches should kill, uh, should destroy a Gridlock spike. And I feel like there should be more of an audio cue. Because when you see Gridlocks, you just shoot them or you just punch them and they don't cause you a problem generally. The only time Gridlocks cause you problems is when you need to get back to site quickly and they're in the way. It's not really That's not really a flank watch type thing. Uh, Mozzie, again, I'm putting a lot of people in B here, but I did say it was going to end up being like a triangle. A horizontal, sort of chevron type shape. Good op. I mean, I don't know why I'm talking about what each operator's got. You know, I'm sort of convincing myself more than anything else. Can deny three drones, but then also get three drones. The 5.52 is a laser. Has a great, cool uh, reload animation, and he's got C4. And he's a cool op, man. Snagged herself a drone. Um, knock poo pants. Not good. Got to be in line for a rework soon, surely. Um, the gun just isn't very good. Uh, the SMG on attack is not great. Yeah, you've got frags, but other than that, there's not much going. Other than being a, a super cool character and being one of the few sort of like 
realistic, tactical, as they say, characters. I think Warden probably sits about here as well at the minute. Uh, no more 1.5 for Warden. We've seen a massive drop in Warden players. I think Warden actually suits really well to being an anchor on site with a shotgun and an SMG-12. C4 or shields are good secondaries. Amaru, just, I'm not saying Amaru's bad, but Amaru's only good in very select situations, therefore she goes into D. I mean, you could probably make an argue to put, yeah, I'll put Amaru in C. Amaru's good for taking control of areas super quickly in, heart, in parts of the map that defenders aren't quite ready for. So it's not just about Amaru being into sight and like hoping to catch the enemy off guard, but you die 80% of the time, but 20% of the time you get three kills. Amaru's really good for when you're attacking, say, top four on consulate and they're still setting up over by CEO, you can Amaru into admin super quick and take control of it before the end. Because what will happen is the enemy's set up, and then they make their way across to admin to hold admin. You can get in there before they get back across. So that's where Amaru's good. And going up hatches can be useful at times, but quite rare. I think Goyo probably fits into A tier. Maybe B tier. I'm going to go A tier. I think Goyo offers a lot when it comes to... Obviously, there's a lot of setup for Goyo, but... Um, the Vector's a laser, he's got the ACOG. Yeah, I think, Goyo, I think Goyo does fit into it. The only thing that's like making me not do that is there's a lot of counters for Goyo. But I also think there's a few different ways of playing him. You can like I'm not mad into putting um Goyo canisters on barricades or on breaches, because like how many people open a barricade and get in within twenty seconds? How many people open a breach and are within yeah, not really that many. Still good though. Kali fits in C. Kali's um, utility, the the lance, is actually very, very good. Counters mirror, destroys a lot of utility. Obviously, shields as well. Um, really solid utility. The only thing is, she's got a sniper rifle, which doesn't lend itself to playing siege particularly well. It's fun, but it's it, you know almost every well every gun on attack, even knock submachine gun, will be better generally than Kali's sniper rifle in most situations. But the SMG is not bad. Well, I recently lost his ACOG. But I still think Wamai fits into A. Wamai may have fit, um, fitted up into S before that. Um, now gets um, the ACOG, sorry, the 1X only on the MP5K. However, don't overlook the org. The, yes, I know the org takes up 75% of the screen, but the org is a beast. You can hold down areas so well playing Wamai on your own with prox mines. So if you've got a corridor that you need to hold, you can put a prox mine at either end of the corridor and you can just put one eye discs in between to keep you safe. You can hold stairways really well where you can put prox mines underneath the stairs or in places below the stairs to give you the notification they're there. And then you've got one eye discs on the stairs to stop the utility getting thrown off. It's a great operator, man. Iona, I don't, I don't know about Iona at the minute. I think Iona probably fits in B. I might even put Iona in C. I just don't think that replicator's... Giving you that much. Now she's lost nades as well. I'm going to leave Iona and see, I think. Oryx. I think Oryx comes down in D. Yes, shields are stronger now, but have you ever actually tried Oryx dashing a shield? Uh, it's not easy to do because you just go in a straight line, and if the shield moves either side, you're kind of screwed. How many times have you played Oryx and actually gone up a hatch? Yeah, not many. Um, Oryx is down there. Ace comes up to here for me. I know as a hard breach, a thermite is probably better, but Ace offers a little bit more. You can destroy shields. Um, the Selma charge can stop bandit tricking the AK is unreal I mean maybe Ace could come down here but I'm going to leave him up there Malusi whack straight up to S tier for me I think Malusi might even be getting banned in ranked territory 4 banshees now no ACOG but that's not the end of the world 4 banshees um, and a secondary shotgun for sight setup or for making uh, opening hatches and getting away I think Malusi's unreal. Like, how many sites can you think of in Siege where there's more than four ways into the site? There, I can't think of many, if any. Um, so Malusi having four banshees is is big. Zero, I tell you what, man, I rate zero. I'm sticking him in A. Comes with a gone six, Harbreach charges, great gun in the SC 3000 k The, the MP7 is not bad, but it's not as good as the SC 3000 k um, Having four cameras plus two drones, and you can destroy things with the cameras. Zero's class, man. It's just. Probably not great in solo queue because you can't. You've got to rely on other people to watch your cameras. Aruni. This is an interesting one. So I think I'm going to put Aruni there as well. Good operator, man. Mm. Just looking at the other people in A tier, and is Aruni better than. Is Aruni on the same level? I think Aruni is, you know. DMR and defense. Only two people with that, with Tuberel. But 
a runic gates can be quite oppressive you've got to waste utility to burn them they can then just be turned back on you've got the ability to make lines of sight with the punch you can one punch barricades and run out the only thing you can't do is make punch holes well no you can make punch holes they're just bloody massive i like a runic flores i like as well again another solid operator is a little bit fragile where you can destroy flores drones quite quickly but if you know where you're using him you can use drone holes to your advantage you can just completely clear areas of the map that you plan on pushing later and then go and do something else. So the classic one for me is I always play um, Flores on attacking statue trophy on Villa. So I'll go to the drone hole at the bottom of Astro Stairs, use the Flores drones to clear utility that's on Astro Stairs, usually like Alamines, Banshees, Fenrirs, etc., etc. Um, go and do whatever we need to do, and then we know when the late push needs to happen up Astro, all the utility's gone already. Good op. Thunderbird poo for me at the minute. Doesn't really offer that much. I'll tell you what is good. It, Gordon is really good on defense, but not great at the minute for me. The heels are not, not, not that good. Osa is solid, but I believe... I'm going to put Osa there, even though I actually really like Osa as a character. Um, a little bit a little bit fragile. Anyone with impact should kill Osa quite quickly. You can p People who tend to play Osa tend to play like they play Monty. You can just shoot a feet quite easily. Good operator, really well balanced operator, and I like the way you can play her two different ways. You know, like aggressive Osa pushing into sight, or you can just hold flanks and hold angles with her. Thorn probably sits comfortably in C, gets the odd kill with a razor bloom, doesn't she? But um, the gun's pretty solid, but it's low fire rate, sits in C. The Zami goes up to S, even now with the double nerf on her shields, on her barricades, keeper barriers, sorry. Um, still a an S tier operator. The lines of sight that she can create is really solid. Sense probably sits in C. Sense has the ability to be a good op. You've just got to make sure that you're using them to the. <laughs> it's a stupid thing to say. You've got to use them to the strengths. Obviously, you have. Um, but there's certain areas where you can roll sense ROU projectors through drone holes, cut off lines of sight where, he, where they, they're pretty good. Um, but overall. Pretty situational. Grim. I think Grim probably sits in S for me at the minute. The ability to bounce the um, canisters, the 552 is great. Um, Bailey secondary as well. Um, but also the, the radius or the, 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 the area that the, the bees now cover is, is more than it used to be. Like, you got buffed like three seasons ago, wasn't it? I think the fact that you see Grim banned in Pro League a lot tells you a lot there. Solis. I think Solis finds herself now in B. It was a comfortable S tier, but that was when you could destroy drones in the prep phase, and it was so strong. I think Solis is still a good operator, still a good roamer, but losing their impact and not being able to use it in prep, still good, still good at finding drones in the, in the action phase, still good post plan. Uh, sorry, not post plan, still good at stopping the plan from below, but just not as good as she was, but is now balanced. The only thing that worries me is. I think it was at SI they said that there was going to be a two-part nerf to Solis, and I think this is done enough. Brava's good as well. Brava comes into the middle. Um, the drone's a little bit loud. Like It's pretty easy to know um, when there's a Brava around town, um, although it is really satisfying when you hack like a, uh, a Maestro camera or an Echo drone or something. But pre pretty solid, but yeah, it's in B for me. Fenrir, since the nerf goes up to A, still really, really solid, but being able to destroy the Fenrirs from everywhere, um, only two can be active at a time. Bear in mind, only two Fenrirs can be active at a time. You can have up to four Banshees down. So yeah, Fenrir sits in A. Ram sits in B for me. Secondary shotgun as well, which is nice. Three big long holes of vertical sits in B. Super out. I don't think Super out is as good as everyone else thinks he is, but I still think they're solid. Um, if you can team up with a Cade when it comes to Tubra where you throw the canister at the top and the Cade throws the canister at the bottom so it's not affected, that works incredibly well. But people tend to just use Tubra as a bit of a like a middle of the road op. Like some people use him for wall denial, but he's not really a wall denial op. He's he's like he's a jack of all trades, but every other operator does what he can do better in their own field. Like Cade is a better wall denial op. Yes, he can slow people down, but well, Lucy's better at slowing people down. Does bring a DMR and C4 though. So again, it's a decent art, but nothing crazy. Deimos. <laughs> Put Deimos there, actually, to be fair. Um, solid art. How many times have I said solid art? 
Yeah, Deimos sits there. The only thing you've got to be careful with Deimos is not to get too tunnel visioned. I feel like a lot of Deimos players see that ping on the map and just run towards it, forgetting there's four other players in the map somewhere. Right then, striker and sentry. I don't know which one's which. I think that's the attacker and that's the defender. So this is striker. Striker goes here and sentry goes there. I played striker a bit. Yes, the EMP and hard breach combo is nice. The flat, um, flash and frags is nice. Um, but I think that um, sentry has a slightly better combination with obviously prox mines and C4, but being able to have a barbed wire and, and a um, deployable and or, or a deployable and impact as well for rotates plus secondary shotgun. I think the, the defender version is slightly better, um, but I still like the attack. I, the thing I like the attacker most is the, the M4 on another operator. Boom, there we have it. Tier list done. Did I waffle on too much? 35 minutes. That's not too bad, I don't think. Um, I'm not going to dwindle too much. Just remember that there's a couple of nerfs and buffs coming soon, so this will all change, and this is why we love Siege, because things change from season to season, from week to week, and it keeps things fresh. Um, thanks for watching as always. That's my thoughts. I haven't mentioned it yet, but what are your thoughts? Get it in the comments below. Do all the things that really helps me out. If you would like, comment, subscribe, it really helps support the channel. If you want to support any further, there's links below for PayPal and for Patreon, etc., etc. You don't have to do any of that. Obviously that's outrageous if you do, but I'm just grateful you've watched the video. If you've got to this point, I'm even more grateful. What have we got here? We've got a, um, got a bottle opener. If you don't know what to comment in the comments below, type bottle opener. Um, or type something in that you fancy. So that's it. Tier list done for Year 9 Season 2. Post-patch Year 9 Season 2 as well. Um, and I'm sure we'll do it all again in Year 9 Season 3. But so far, thanks for watching. Thanks for getting involved with the channel. And I appreciate you. Cheers.